Hi, I'm Monica and welcome to my reading vlog for Legendborn. So this duology has been waiting for me to read for a very long time ever since Legendborn first came out and I'm finally getting around to it since Bloodmarked is coming out on November 7th, I believe. And I'm really excited to finally tackle it. And this is my first time reading Legendborn. If you didn't know what Legendborn was about, so Legendborn takes place on a university campus and we're following Brie Matthews who is in a early college program for early gifted high schoolers. But on her first night on campus, she witnesses a magical flying demon attack that only she can see. But she very quickly finds out that there is a secret society on campus formed of students who hunt down these demons and they're called Legendborn. And it also turns out that Brie herself has magic, has a strange connection to this Legendborn society through her dead mother. Brie realizes that there is something kind of strange or iffy about her mother's death and she decides to enlist the help of another Legendborn, Nick, to help solve her apparent mother's murder. There's also elements of King Arthur's Knights and a magical war that's going to be coming up in this book. For Legendborn, there won't be huge spoilers in this vlog but if there is like something really large and spoilery, I will have like a photo of like Legendborn in like the corner here and that will let you know that there is going to be spoilers being spoken about and I will also have a more cohesive and comprehensive review of this duology of Legendborn and Bookmarked and I'll link that up above in the I and in the description box below when it is uploaded. And before we jump into the vlog portion, I would really appreciate it if you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe if you want to see more bookish content from me. So let's just get right to the vlog. All right, hi. So this is my initial reaction to Legendborn and I'm around 10% of the way in and on chapter 6. This book is a big one. <laughs> I didn't realize it was really thick. It is 500 pages long, but when I first start reading the book. I was really immersed already into the writing and the writing itself is really well crafted so I don't think it will be a surprise if I really read this book quickly. And going into this book I did think it was just a fantasy but now finding out that it is an urban fantasy and it's set in a university setting it just makes it even more interesting to me to continue reading. And when we are being introduced to the Legendborn we encounter Selwyn who is Someone I would describe as who really enjoys having their power and I really like the descriptions of a magic with using light and I think shadows. So I'm really interested to find out more about how the magic works in this world. Also with the discussion of Bree's grief journey with losing her mother and how people process death in many different ways and with Bree herself she's not really having a good time with processing her grief and she's gone away from her home and trying to figure out where she is now as a person in her life and also just trying to continue to grieve for her mother. I think Brie will get into quite a lot of trouble or adventure at this campus because she does have some hints of magic so I'm really excited to see where we go from this point. I do have to mention that Brie is a black teenager and then there are instances of where that is highlighted because there is an encounter with a police officer and how they belittle uh, Brie just because she's black and that's not okay. I do hope we see that Brie comes into her own power and that she's not going to back down when she discovers that she might be part of the legend point too. Anyways, I'll see you in the next clip. Alright, hi again. It's been a few days since I last filmed from that last clip and I am so far loving this book and I actually did end up going to the library and picking up a copy, a physical copy of it. I was reading an ebook copy of it. So I'm like about halfway through and I'm on chapter 26. And right off the bat, I do have to say the magic in this world is really fun to learn about but with every new fantasy book. It does take me some time to learn about the new terms. In this one, we have like Legendborn, Onceborn, King's Mage, a lot of like medieval King Arthur-esque terms. It's a little bit easier to get into this world, I think. I love how the secret society even has more secrets than what its typical members know, which is of course 
what a secret society would do. I'm trying not to say so many spoilers because I'm trying to be a little bit mindful of that. But um, with Nick being Bree's mentor, pure mentor, and how he's connected to the Legendborn as well, I really like the development of Bree's and Nick's relationship and it turns into something a little bit more. With Nick himself, he's really the noble figure and he also has a connection to Cell, Selwyn that we met in chapter 1 and they were really closely associated with each other. We don't know much about Cell but uh, we do know that Nick and Cell, they have like a past rivalry and some tension in their relationship. And the strange thing about Cell that I need to point out is that he likes to perch like a bird in trees. <laughs> He's always like in the trees, in the woods near the campus. And I'm just like, is this dude okay? And as it turns out, he's not okay. Anyways, on to Bree. She is going through the thick of it right now. She's going through so much. She just started this new early college program and now she's being tossed into the secret society, although she didn't need to be. But she wants to find out answers about her mom's death. She's needing, like, within like the first week of being on campus, she's like fighting demons and fighting for her life and discovering this entire world and history about herself. Brie at this point, she's wanting to join a Legendborn society and in order to do that, she has to go through a competition and there are trials which she is struggling with because she doesn't really have the background knowledge that everyone else does. And Brie's mother does have a connection to this society but I'm really intrigued by how and we don't really know yet. And Brie herself, she's very defiant, observant, and stubborn. And I really like how she's challenging everyone in this secret society because it's mainly of white people and she's the only black woman there. So she's trying to grapple with people having like microaggressions towards her and, and that really pissed me off. I'm like, but it's realistic take on it. And really Bree's story is a really large exploration of her grief and how she is dealing with her mother's death and it's not going well. Oh, I also have to mention Alice who is Bree's best friend from their town and they both got into the early college program together. Alice is like a goody two-shoes. She really follows the rules. The way in one scene that Alice is freaking out over the dean being called into the dean's office and like her parents being contacted. It was a lot against Brie because Brie just lost her mom like three months ago from this point of the book and her friend is now just yelling at her like, oh my god, you broke the rules. But then again, they're teenagers, they were 16 years old. I do understand where Alice is coming from and they do end up making amends and Brie really does need um, some support right now. I'm really excited to see where we go next. We had the line of Morgaine being mentioned and I'm predicting that has something to do with Bree's mother's death and I don't know why but I think Nick will die because he keeps on getting attacked. But let's see what happens next. I just came back home from work and I am filming this on another day and I am on around page 375. Anyways, I really want to do a quick check-in with a few points. So with this section of the book, part three, the magic system has gotten so much more deeper and with what Brie has learned, there is an opposite to the order of the Brown Knights and that is Rootcraft, but I won't go into detail on that. And secondly, I really love how Bree's powers are still growing in intensity and I really can't wait until she's in full control of those powers and that she still continues to be defiant against the status quo of the Order. So I really like Bree standing up for, of course, of what is right and disrupting these people's lives. And third, of course, I need to talk about him. I really like Cell. Although Nick is stable and I do like Nick, Cell is just much more interesting as a character. There's a huge spoiler here, so just skip ahead once you don't see the cover of Legendborn on the screen anymore. So when I found out that Cell was a half-human, half-demon, I was like so shocked. 
but the signs and the hints were there for us readers. I just didn't come to the conclusion that was brought to us. Okay, moving on to the trials that we have with Brie trying to get into the order. The trials scenes were really fun and the action scenes are also really well written and easy to follow. So in this part of the book, we do see more of a friendship growing between Cell and Brie and that happens throughout the trials. And in the third trial, Brie doesn't really know combat so she's training and trying her best against all these other pages that have been training their entire lives. Cell ends up helping Brie and gives her some pointers right before the third trial and the after results of that trial was just so violent and um i hope vaughn gets what he deserves and um can you tell that i really like so um i'm just more invested into his character because he's really mysterious and when we have brie find out the truth about her mother and about something with so my heart just broke for the both of them and i also have to mention i really love that twilight reference that we got because i personally grew up reading Twilight books and that's kind of what kickstarted my love for YA fantasy and getting into this bookish world. Anyways, I do feel that there is a lot more drama incoming and I can't wait, not wait to see how the book one ends. Okay, so I just finished Legendborn and they should say the last part, part 4 of Legendborn is non-stop action. There's a lot of revelations and you finally get to see some payoff from earlier events. So I think I'm very immersed into the Legendborn world because throughout several pivotal scenes with Brie, I had like shivers running through my spine. Like I was like shivering because I was like in awe about what just happened on the page. I love Alice now. She proven herself to me in that she's the person that Brie needs for support. Also, learning about Bree's powers, I loved her journey and now at the end of the book, there is a huge twist and I bet in book two, we will learn about the consequences about that. I also think that Nick and Bree are a really strong couple and that they're really good for each other based on how they met and through all the events that has happened in Legendborn so far. And I think Sal with Brie and Nick, there's like a strange love triangle going on. I don't know, there's like hints of something more. I predicted correctly about why Sal really likes to perch like a bird because he's always like jumping down from high places. I was kind of right about that, but I also really love that in between moments of action, there were a little bit of humor and it reminded me of the Marvel movies and also just the connections of everything to Brie was amazing because there's just some sort of nice climax and everything comes together really nicely in the end. I really like how the last scene in this book is an homage to being poetic to also the first scene in this book. So anyways, I'm gonna go to my concluding thoughts now. So what I thought about Legendborn is that it was amazing. I absolutely love this world. The characters are complex and I really love our girl Brie representing black girl magic and she also goes through a really intimate and personal journey of overcoming traumas and also learning to process her mother's death and so she's also grieving throughout this entire book. And we also have Nick who is a stand-up guy and he also goes against traditions of what is expected of him in the order and he also deals with anger issues because of childhood traumas. And we also have Cell who is a really powerful mage. He's also quite angry and he really likes a good fight. And he also deals with a complex childhood past. <laughs> so there's a lot of common themes of people regaining their emotional abilities, process past and unspoken of or buried traumas and current traumas that they are all going through. So I really like that common theme between these three characters. Also the magic is very well crafted and I think if this would to be adapted into a TV show or movie, it would also look very visually appealing on the screen. We also have romance, so we have our really direct romance and we also have hints of other romances happening in this book and I do really love the representation that we get in this book for the LGBTQ community 
as well of course Brie being a black girl, being a person of color. But I do think one criticism of this book, even though I did I am giving Legend more than five stars. I do think that the character should have been aged up a little bit. Like Brie could have been like 18 and that would have been fine instead of 16 and like going into this early college program. But I guess it's fine. It's just like a minor detail. And I also think that there should have been a longer timeline because this book takes place over the span of two weeks and a lot goes down, a lot of emotions happen, and I just think if it was just spread out like a little bit more like over a month or like two months, it would have been more believable in the case in the case of like some relationship progression and like the depth of some friendships because some of the people that we meet are literally just two weeks in their friendship or relationship and it's life and death and it gets really dramatic <laughs> i think so originally with the legend one vlog i was going to include blood marks and sequel in the same vlog but then i realized i have too much footage so i thought it was just better to split them up you reached this point in the video of the Legend Morn vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for my Bloodmark spoiler filled vlog. I believe it'll come out in a few weeks. I will have my full thoughts on that as well and have a vlog video for Bloodmark as well as a full review video of Legendborn and Bloodmark together, like a more comprehensive one. Other than that, I hope you can give me a huge thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more of my videos, and also ring the bell to be notified. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!